Here we are, and welcome to the most anticipated interview of the Friday Night Movie Podcast here at South by Southwest. This movie wrapped us in a warm rock and roll blanket. It filled our hearts. It's called 299 Queen Street West. It is the story of much music told through incredible archival footage by a brilliant director, Sean Menard. Uh, who has also done some other incredible stuff, very moving stuff, particularly about the Expos, which means a lot to my family. Uh, Becky and I got to go to the premiere last night. Mm-hmm. And we're also joined by Rick Campanelli, also known as Rick the Temp. <laughs> Legendary <laughs> Won't VJ. be able to shake that one ever. Legendary the VJ. Oh, I, 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 I instinctively said it to you when I saw it. <laughs> you did. It out. <laughs> it. Um, there are worse handles out there, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. Fair, fair enough. So, Sean, congratulations. How's it feel oh, now that the you. film's been on the big screen? I thank you. You know, it was um, a surreal experience for sure to be sitting in an actual audience with people watching it. Because I was saying in the opening that really only a handful of people have seen it. Uh, so everyone that was there last night, that's really the first that- wave of anyone. Now, I, I mentioned this to you before, I, and I, I felt the vibe in the room, which is that like when the hip used to come play in the States, they'd play it like a small club, and then the people would show up, though, would be just like out of control. And throughout that film, there were cheers, and we all knew to cheer at the same time. <laughs> Gord Downey comes on the screen, everybody cheers. Oh, yeah. Erica M. comes on the screen, everybody cheers. How did it feel? It was like a rock show. How did it feel? Yeah, I would, that was unexpected, to be honest with you. I never anticipated that type of reaction um, <laughs> live in the in the theater. So it was interesting <laughs> to see the VJs that would get the love and, and the bands. And it did have a bit of that. It had a lot of energy. As someone that's been attending a few films here, I, I'm not even biased. There was a different vibe to how people were reacting in real time, which is really cool. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, for sure. All right, so let's talk about the... Ne- Becky is our documentary, yeah. th- our resident documentary filmmaker. So I'm going to give the actual, like, substantive question to Becky. <laughs> so as much filming as we do in documentary, or in your case, collecting of archive, which is an extraordinary feat, um, the films are really made in the edit. And I'm wondering, I mean, in my experience, and I'm wondering with this film, how much of the narrative had you constructed beforehand and how much of it did you discover when you were going through those tapes? That's a really good question, Becky. I did a lot of the interviews and just started building the narrative from there. I tried to go in with, um, I, I don't know, in the past on any films, when I feel I have a set idea of what the narrative's going to be, it ends up being totally different. Oh, so wow. I'm open to the art of discovery, try to stay curious. When I'm having conversations with Rick or other VJs, I'll ask myself, um, where, where is this leading me? Where is it going? And then I'll try and find that thread in the archives. So... Um, I don't know if I'm answering this question. No, I think you, you are. are. But l- you l- are. L- let me add a, another thread to this because I watched all, all the, exception of one of the shows that I wasn't as familiar with, I watched all those shows. I had different feelings about them. Electric, Sur- although Monica Deol has always been an icon to me, I never watched Electric Sources. I didn't want to watch people dancing. It wasn't, that wasn't my music. I was a combat day clip, yeah, intimate and yeah. interactive guy. Like the, and Spotlight, the blue spotlights. Like yeah. those were the things that I loved. One of the things that I thought was so incredible about this film is the narrative thread that tied them all together as part of this story. So I learned so much there. I did too, Shai. I I, I was there for 10 years of my life and I learned so much too. More so the beginning of it all, you know. Um, and, and you're right, Becky, all the, these hours and hours of footage to go through, and I'm sure there were still tons that, tons that we even even got to, but how someone puts that all together and the way Sean did it and his team did it and, and that film, it just, it brings you back. It tells a beautiful story. You learn a lot and uh, it, was, it was brilliant in my, in my eyes uh, I watching that. that. Rick, you're, you're quite the hype man. Oh, <laughs> I respect. No, I, oh. And it's like, so, okay, we're fans. Great. We love it. But to have Rick who lived it endorse this film. I wanted to watch it again right away I, after I it ended. Back it's it's like, I said, I don't know how long this film has been going on, but yeah. it can just go on the rest of the night. Yes, right? Yeah. I could have gone, it was, what, 120 minutes? I could have gone 240 minutes yeah. or more of that. Of we, that. we need the series now. Yeah, we do need a series. It, it was intended to be get uh, the viewer lost in these moments, so mm-hmm. that's why I leaned into just archives. Um, I feel if you use on-camera interviews, it creates this um, almost, if Rick is speaking and you see him in 2023 and he's coming from a reflective standpoint, it 
it can be jarring for the audience in a sense or not jarring but it will just it, it has you um, time hopping a little bit mm. whereas this mm. when Rick is speaking about a moment that's actually going on and you're seeing that moment and, you, and you're hearing him it's like director's commentary no yeah. you 100% pull it off we felt like we were living this that we were going we through just, this I, in time I kept grabbing my heart going like yes. oh, oh. now Same. I will say this Same. though the man hasn't aged. He might have yeah, aged. I know it is. Well, it's a little. I unnerving. did sell my soul to <laughs> Moses Neimer in his office all those years ago. And when you make that deal with Moses, yeah. uh, no, thank you. I feel ninety-five inside. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it wear and tear over the years, but no, I appreciate that. I have my parents to thank. Uh, and no, and all those snow jobs probably all, yeah, snow to cost you. <laughs> yes, they did. Inside organs, but oh yeah, it. breaking bones. For our listeners, snow, snow jobs board. were the equivalent of. These MTV spring breaks, but they were at ski mountains, and they yeah. were the yeah. coolest yeah. party ever. And then we, and then they added some sand jobs. That's true. Okay, there you go. That's I love the names of their sh- the shows. <laughs> Very risque, but uh, we brought people down to Daytona as well. Yeah. That, that's okay. I want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce back and forth. I'm gonna take advantage of Rick's being here. So one thing that dawned on us. So our philosophy on this show is: if you're on the show, you're part of the family. And and Becky turns to me during the show and she goes. The movie, she goes, holy, holy shit, the VJs taught us how to interview, like, and we, we didn't start interviewing until 25 years later. It's not like we're But we're, we're descendants. <laughs> we're descendants of, of you. Of you. Well, basically, we it's just conversation, you know. Yeah. We're just talking and having a conversation. Anyone can do it. Well, no? You, I don't know. Yes, except that <clears throat> people don't yeah, when, they're, when they're interviewing, it, when they're interviewing no, someone. No, it's they actually just, very <laughs> difficult to be yourself on camera. It, it, they say it and they, they advise it, but it, you end up becoming almost um, a different, per, or, or you have an idea of what someone on camera should be, and people end up imitating mm-hmm. that. Or even on the radio, right? They put on that voice. Yeah. It's very difficult yeah. to be natural. It, it's true be, because my first few interviews, and they were terrible. They were awful. I was so uncomfortable with the surroundings, and and I wasn't uh, I wasn't educated in the world of television. I'm a phys ed grad. So I do remember, and I told you, I remember them coming up to me right away saying how bad it was. They were just open with me, and they're <laughs> honest with me. And I appreciate that because that makes you go home and research more and, and do put in more work and be better at your job. And that's what happened to me over time. It took a long time, but I, but I finally got there. And, uh, yeah, they said some pretty hurtful things at oh, first. Well, and they also said, Rick, when are you going to get an edge? We want you to be more edgy. Like, they sort of at first were trying to change the way the person I was, um, but it was all for... But Rock and roll to, to us because like so my entry point is Steve Anthony Eric yeah, and Michael same, Williams same here so to us when you got on it was like one of us, one of us we're, yeah. we're, we're on this show um, I the thing that I loved about you so much was the grace with which you were able to be yourself so effortlessly even in the strange situation so I'm gonna bring you back to a memory I have I watched this live on TV and if you don't remember, it's totally fine. Yeah, all right, all right, let's do this. Okay. No, I, lo- I love this. You were this. interviewing one of my favorite artists, Our Lady Peace, Rain Maida. Yeah. And you were in like Disneyland. Like that. <laughs> I remember. You, you know I know where you're going with this. And you asked the Mickey him Mouse. some fun yeah. question. And he goes, <laughs> fun, we're not doing a we're Mickey not... Mouse interview. <laughs> <laughs> and my personal reaction was, my personal reaction was, I want to watch the Buddy Cop show of Rick and Rain Maida. Like, Rain Maida <laughs> as the straight man and Rick, at, like, on an adventure. <laughs> Shy, you're, you're hilarious, man. I'm glad you brought this up because Rain and I keep in touch to this day. I just reached uh, out to him the other day and he he constantly tells me, Rick, I'm so sorry I was so tough on you back then. He, he says, why was I like that? Like, Chantel has really loosened him up over the years. And, and, and Rain, I think, realizes how much of... Well, in that world when you're a rock star... You're a rock star. You want to talk about rock and roll. You want to talk about your music. You don't want to talk about Mickey Mouse. Um, I think I got that mostly from the boy bands, those fun questions. But thanks for reminding me. I'm sweating right now. If if there was ever a doubt that you are Canadian (laughs) and you've grown up, it it has now been been cleared up. (laughs) So I'm going to contrast that. You know who an artist who I think would have? And you picked one of the iconic Much Music interviews. and, And this is a question overall of how you pick the artist Sean but you pick the iconic on the hotel balcony of Erica M and Nirvana like I remember that and I remember it would replay in the spotlights and all the different things 
I bet you Kurt Cobain would have been the way the way the elements you showed. He would have been probably make way cooler with Mickey Mouse questions than <laughs> like rock star questions. W what do you think, looking back at these people, and how did you pick which interviews were going to be in the film? Yeah, I'm. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that one because the Kurt Cobain Nirvana. Uh, a lot of the Nirvana fans will actually cite online that that interview with Erica M and Much Music was the best he ever had. Oh, wow. And she actually opens, it's not in the film, but she opens with a simple question of asking him the last book he read. Oh. And you see, I mean, he's in a press, you know, press junket, press cycle that day, and you see him start to uh, just open up and unwind, and she starts to have this great conversation. And that was the beauty of a lot of these interviews. Picking the artists was... Um, was challenging, but what I decided to do is I always envisioned this film, how it would be viewed 10, 20, 30 years out. So I tried to pick artists that were, had that legacy of that period of time. If Generational? Makes, absolutely. Yeah. And um, obviously, I, I would earmark on something that they said that allowed me to get from point A to point B, or if they're saying something poignant or about the process of creativity, then, you know, or it's helping the narrative in any way, then that would automatically make it in. I'm wondering, I want, because from the moment it begins to the moment it ends, it is just the most wonderful archival footage, right? Like you're, everything we're seeing we love. What ended up on the cutting room floor? What didn't make it in? What are, what are the moments that we, because that's now what I'm thinking about. When we joke around, where's the series? So were there any special moments that you felt Definitely Green Day taking my microphone and putting it into a microwave <laughs> uh, uh, on Young Street uh, outside Sam the Record Man or whatever it was at the time when they played the alley there. there you're right, Becky. There's so much. And I'm, I don't even know if you knew about most of the stuff that people were sending you. Like We couldn't watch it all back in the day. Right. So much. I edited the film mainly in, I, well, it was, I was telling Rick last night, it was 72 straight days. So I'll, wow. edit, I'll edit. Whoa. I, I, I used to edit in long periods of 15, 18 hour days and, and just crush it. I find if I get away from it, it's almost uh, similar as a writer. Writers have to show up every day to stay in that world and those characters because what, what benefits you have is when you walk away or you're doing something else, you're still ruminating about something. So it allows you to solve those problems. Wait, you only edited this in 72 days? But Correct. straight days, I mean, straight days, that's kind of... that's Yeah, that's I, yeah I would write it on a board and every day I was done, I would I would wipe it in, you know, 71, 70, 69. I, mean, I have a photo of me with the zero. That was a big day. Uh, we, um, that's, a, that's, a ben, that's a banana schedule, but that also is short for a feature documentary. I have spent years in in ed I've spent like a year or two in an edit for for a film. Yeah, uh, I, well, I, see, to me that was long. Um, yeah, my last film I did in two weeks, and that went on worldwide on Netflix. So I, I don't oh, wait. Uh, plug the film. You, yeah. Oh, the Carter Effect. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right, Vince Carter story. Oh yeah, it was executive produced by Drake and LeBron James. Oh my gosh. So, two so weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So no, the I, brilliance of Sean Murad right I, there. I, that I, just. I guess you have well, these edits. You have. You have. Start a, and stop. Is you do have a mystique about. To. We were at a party last night, and there were some folks from the Canadian film world there, and we mentioned you, and they were like. Sean Menard, he's an outlaw. He's doing his thing. He, yeah. like, it was I, don't, I don't take uh, Canadian tax credits. Um, you know, I, on this one, I self, self financed. Wow. Um, because it allows me to have that freedom and that creative control. And when you take other people's money, you, you guys probably know this, you, you lose that. This is and you something can't move we as talk fast about and, a lot. And that's, I think. That's why this podcast loses so much money, I because I won't take anyone's money for you. Um, no one's offering us money. But we'll see when someone offers Two totally different it. stories right there. Yeah. But, you know, it just depends which perspective you're telling it from. Now, when it came to choosing the like, last archival question, sorry, I just, archival films to me are the absolute, uh, Same. The, the biggest mountain to climb. I, I, I truly have so much respect. That you did, and you did it in one shot. Um, when when it came to tracking down the footage, you talked about ninety five percent came from the actual archives, right? Something like that, and then that last little bit from people sending you tapes. Now you're interviewing all the VJs and everyone who worked there. They're telling you stories, and then you're going out and you're hunting down that footage. Is that is that what you're doing, or you already have specific footage and you're saying, "Okay, tell me about." I, I, this, I want to put this in the film. Tell me about film. Tell me about it. How are you H hybrid. balancing that? Okay. Hybrid. So I would I would lead um, uh, to some ways that I knew I was crafting or was mm -hmm. going to build based on previous interviews. 
So I'm, I'm almost cutting as I'm in production. Okay. Amazing. If that's, a, that's yes, a peek that, behind that, the curtain. Yeah, that's yeah. rad. Um, so I'm kind of having an it's idea. It's like jazz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, it, it's, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, it's music, I guess. That's, that's like, it's like you're jamming with the footage. Maybe that's why I struggle yeah, okay. getting financing is because they really want to see what the film is going to be, and I push back on that. I don't know. How, how can I know if I haven't spoken in the world of documentary? If I'm about to interview 15 um. people... I don't know. I, I can push and I can steer it, which I see in a lot of documentaries is, is a problem that I have, yeah. is is they come in with a set idea and then they grind out that narrative no matter what, we even can, if they're not uh, getting those sound bites. We can talk off the record more about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, yep. But, it, but it, to me, if the narrative is solely, which this film is, is through the VJs that live this experience, let me have these conversations and, and let me figure out what it is. Because there were paths I wanted to go down that it just... It wasn't coming from the stories, so I abandoned that and, and went forward. So, we love movies. I assume you're lovers of movies, and I, I want to make sure we get to our Mickey Mouse question. Yeah. Because, you well, know, to this day, I think about that moment before I do an interview. Like, so here comes the Mickey Mouse question, okay? Only one. Now, I feel like we could like, do a few. <laughs> like an icebreaker type question, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I was just like, it's just like, Loose, let's let's lighten up the mood. Fun. Let's, let's have fun. Let's have, have fun. fun. We like, do a lot we of would bits. be talking yes. Yes, I like that. at the table. Like, we don't, our policy on the show, we don't interview people we don't want to hang out with. So, okay. Nice. Yeah. This is my favorite nice. interview yeah. I've done through <laughs> South <laughs> I just yeah. realized. I feel very comfortable. Just so you know, we when we heard you all say that in Much Music, I'm like, that's what we say every time. We want everyone to walk away from this show Saying like, oh, looking back on their day, and they're like, oh, like, this was the one I liked the most. Um, so okay, the movie's gonna be a hit. It's gonna be massive. Okay, I know it. Then Netflix, Hulu, whoever, Crave, they're gonna come calling, and they're gonna say, we gotta turn this into a series or uh, or, or a, a narrative, a, stra- a streaming narrative. Yeah, we're gonna means- we're gonna now do the fictionalized narrative. So you're now the- you're now producing, show running. You're picking the cast. You get to pick the cast. All time. So, okay. like, we can go back to you actors can... of like the 1950s if you want oh. to to today. This is well, this, these are the rules of our world. Yeah, okay. like, this is like how this. we're playing yeah, today. This yeah, is yeah, how yeah. we're playing. Okay, okay. So, like, for example, we're very confident that if we were to all time cast Rick, we're going with Breck and Meyer. Breck and Meyer. The Breck and you know Breck and Meyer is. Who's Breck and Meyer? You ever see Road Trip or, or um, Can't Hardly Wait or? Yeah. He's a clueless. He, clueless. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's all coming back he's to me the, now. He's yes. the he's skateboarder like the in clueless. Yes. 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 Okay. Clueless. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. With the long flow. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like that, that choice. Yeah. I was gonna I like go modern choice. day Jeremy Renner. Oh yeah. Yes. Of course. Because Jeremy that Renner too. also. Because oh. Jeremy Renner doing comedy would be great, would be and fantastic. and Rick's character would be funny. <laughs> and that would, yeah. That's amazing. Modern day Jeremy Renner. Okay. So for like Michael Williams, I was I was really marinating on this because the film illuminates because he's like. He was already very established rap city. Like I didn't know about his trailblazing until I saw the film. But to me, if I look at current actor, I don't know if you've seen Creed Three, but Jonathan Majors, who is just I don't know how many Oscars that guy's gonna get in his life. It's gonna be a lot. Um but he's gonna be he's gonna be a powerhouse. Yeah. yeah. But he would make the most amazing Michael Williams. So, so who else would Cap, you wait, who, who's is, gonna be your no, Erica no, M? Who's okay. gonna wow. be your Monica well, Deol? <laughs> I'm not the filmmaker you are, yeah, but who do you have in mind? Play oh, together. No. Jam. Just jam on it. This I love the Jeremy Renner casting. That's a, tough, that's a good one. Yeah, because when they were younger, hmm. of course, right? I mean, whenever, yeah. You can pick any time, though. You want to pick James is, Cagney, you can. This is like the... <laughs> like, for, like the, one of the things we were thinking is, like, although they don't look alike, but right, Steve right. Anthony, like, Ryan Reynolds is Steve Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the vibe. Ryan Reynolds. Steve, I could see that. Or, or Owen Wilson. <gasps> oh. oh! Owen Wilson can be a Steve that's Anthony. Amazing. Two wacky characters. Yeah. That's way better. Spicoli? Spicoli. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a young Sean Penn. Like, young fun Sean, Sean Penn. Young Sean Penn. Not serious Sean Penn. Yeah. See that's not why Rain Meta yeah. in that interview. Not Rain Penn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, that's amazing. Okay, Erica M. Like, mm. like Renona Ryder. Um, yeah, Marissa Renona. Tomei. Like, uh, if you go current, there's an actor who I'm sure you're not familiar with, but I think is amazing. A uh, younger actor. Her name is Dana De Lorenzo. Mm. She was in the Ash vs Evil Dead, the Evil Dead TV show. She's one of my favorite actors. Um, she well, would make be a, a great, great Erica, Erica M. Because she's an amazing Becky, talk. Becky, you kind of have a vibe of the actress um, oh, in the 90s. She was in Groundhog Day. Um, Andy, McDowell. Andy McDowell. Oh, you, oh, did Andy you ever McDowell. get Andy McDowell? Andy. No, thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think I ever get... No one, no one is ever like, you look like or you have the vibe of. But thank you. Good point. I will good take point. it. Yeah. That's, all right, so it. now we're casting Becky in the yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Becky's in the movie. That's where we'll start. 
Friday Night Movie yeah. Podcast opening scene. <laughs> I could only do the, if they're in front of me. I, didn't, okay. I, 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 didn't I know it's hard. To, it's hard. To, it's, it's a great question. It's I a think fun you guys question. Gave it's some great answers. Oh yeah, these are great answers. Yeah, you don't have to fun. spend a lot of time. Okay. Uh, uh, I, had, I had one for Rick though. I had uh, another Mickey Mouse one for. Okay, go for Mickey Mouse. Um, go for Mickey Mouse. Any, Mouse, any, any artist that you never had the chance to interview, either because they had already passed by the time you were, you know. Yeah. At MTV, or they didn't exist much yet. Music, music. Well, I mean, most, I, most definitely, Becky. No, it's okay. I know exactly. Well, you it's because there's an MTV question hand. we want to ask, yeah. and it's in our brains, in and our I can feel it telepathically. I'm, no, yeah. listen, um, I'm going to give you a couple answers to that question. First of all, the Kurt Cobain interview, and we talked about it earlier. Earlier, I watched that interview religiously. I taped it on my VHS. I rewound that. I watched it over and over and over. I was a huge Nirvana fan. I got. I, I was fortunate enough to see them in concert uh i was in the mosh pit and i caught dave Grohl's drumstick and it was oh a moment when i was back in university so and then you know mid 90s 94 it, my life and most people's lives that were into nirvana oh yeah it was traumatic it was traumatic i, I watched you actually uh not to sound creepy but obviously i, I wanted to see your reaction during the film and i looked uh. over at rick during that part of Kurt, Cob uh, Kurt Cobain and, and when he passes away, you were sad. I was sad. Uh, I, know, listen, I'm sad. getting, I, I'm it's sad it's right now just thinking about it. about it because I became so close with Dave and, and interviewing Dave over the years and, and Taylor as well uh, over the years. And Taylor, heartbreaking. and those guys were just such salt of the earth guys, like fun, intelligent, talented musicians, great human beings. So when when you when you start losing these people in life that you become close with, so so going back to the question, Kurt Cobain, that. I've always wanted to interview Kurt Cobain. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's not gonna happen. And and the assignment that I always wanted back in the day, like the South by Southwest assignment, George always got at Much Music, and I always wanted to come to to this. So to get it. In years later with ET Canada, it was it was awesome to be here. Now to be here in a different, you know, aspect of it all, uh, answering questions, it's it's wonderful. That and how about you? Who do you wish you should I show my hotel guest card? Does that help? That I mean, some I have of no us idea. is here. Yeah, I don't know. Stay, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> how, how many? How much? Um, well, how about you? Who would you would have? Who would you have interviewed? I wanted to actually know who, because I never really got to ask this question because it wasn't a question I would have asked Rick for the film. But who was your top interview? that you, when you look back... 100%. I think it was the Chili Peppers when they all came in uh, for the first time as a f group. All four of them came but in. That's because like they'd come in, but a fan of the band. A huge fan of the band. Like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, Foo Fighters, like all that genre was my... Like everyone thought it was the boy band genre that I was into. And that was fun doing thought, that stuff. I, but actually, until I met Rick, I thought he was a... A, a, a pop star fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then you started to tell me Listen, I respect those guys for doing what they're doing, but sure. my genre is alt rock. Yeah, like that, you know, that. no doubt, and all that you know, all that stuff that, catapulted that. my love for music. That is amazing. Um, all right, uh, I assume we've got to get going. Yeah, we have to wrap. Okay. okay. So last question is this: uh, one of the themes, open secret in sorry, the film is. 299 Queen Street West, uh, Queen Street West, wherever you can watch it, you got to watch it. If you're at South by, watch it. When it's on TV, we're going to promote it like gotta hell. Um, one of the open secrets in Canada, and every artist who went on it, and you illuminated this in the film, is that much music just smoked MTV. Um, but what the film does so well is it provides the evidence. We always knew it, but the visual evidence and the thesis is there. I know you didn't go in with an agenda, but how did you go, Ashan, and, and take us out on that, how did you go about crafting that argument? I actually, at one point, was going to show clips of MTV, and then it dawned on me that it was just more powerful to stay in the much music world and the sound bites driving that home. So I love that you brought that up because that's that was the goal. I want to bring that... Um, evidence to the to the viewer that's watching it why this is so powerful to, for those that didn't experience it outside of Canada so that's I, I respect that was a great yeah and then and there was a voice and a face from MTV there last night I don't know if you know Caduce was in the audience watching no, the I, premiere yeah, and he had big a big smile and clapped and loved the film as well so he understands both worlds he he auditioned for the VJ search back in 2000 mm -hmm. we much didn't give him a shot 
MTV hired him on, so he knows both worlds. And and I'm sure if you sat down with Caduce right now, he would uh, it, it, tell tell the way it is and the way you did, it, you know, with much music being a little str stronger of it. I remember he put his hand up in the uh, post Q and A. He didn't ask a question; he just said thank you. Yeah, and said yeah. how much better it was than MTV. <laughs> I answered, "You're welcome." Of course. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Sean Menard. Congratulations pleasure. on the incredible film and the ride that you're on right now. And Rick Campanelli. Oh, my pleasure. Legend. Thank you. So my great pleasure. to be here. Have an amazing thank rest of the Thank you for having us. Thank you.